Hi, I'm Jenny. Welcome to my channel where we focus on using ordinary materials to make beautiful things. Today we're going to work some more on the mixed media piece of art that we started last week on the video. Um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and work on covering the whole background in collage paper. So I have picked out some papers to do that with. I have a stack of paper from um, a Bartlett's quotation, and I thought that was a good choice as a former English teacher. Uh, I used to, when I taught advanced placement uh, English in high school, I would ask the kids to memorize a few quotes to help them when they had to write essays on the fly, so they chose some generic quotes. So that seemed like a, a good choice to represent me. Um, then I chose some pieces of sheet music that focused on love and couples and things like that to represent um, the music part of my husband and the love songs and stuff that we sing to one another. So I have kind of a variety of sheet music. It's my cat jumping up on, <laughs> you probably heard her, she's jumping up on top of my um, shelves over there where she's not supposed to be. And then around the edges, I, I decided what to do with the edges. I am going to cover them in pieces of maps. Um, so I just cut out some strips of map and I just did it based really on the color of the map. I just wanted yellows, blues, greens um, so that I got some that have water and more some that have land. Uh, this one's a little solid, so I'll probably use the other side. I really like this one. And the way that's gonna work is it's just gonna kind of slide in and fold over this way to be, and then glued down. And so I'll probably go ahead and do the center part and then come back and do the edges uh, just because it'll be easier to get to it, I think, at that point, because um, I'm gonna have to move it off of the table. So I do wanna talk a little bit about the materials I use. These are, as I said, just plain book pages. This is a little thinner, so I imagine it's probably going to wrinkle some. Um, the sheet music is a little thicker because a lot of it has, you know, a backing on one side of cover and things. So the paper is a little bit thicker. Um, you could use like gel medium or matte medium to, to glue this down. You could use a mixture of PVA glue and water to glue it down. You could use Mod Podge. Um, there are lots of things that you could use to attach your substrate uh, to the collage papers, right? So this is the substrate and these are the collage papers. I like to use um, wallpaper and border adhesive. So this is inexpensive for a tub. You can get it at places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, it, there's quite a bit in it. If it's a little thick, you can add a little bit of water to it, but it doesn't hurt. It goes under and you can go over the top of it. It dries clear. Um, it is not particularly shiny, so it's it's okay to put over the tops of things to get a nice a nice base. So I feel like this this works well, at least as well as um, many of the other choices, but probably for less money. So it's to me it's it's a good choice. And I'm using just a really inexpensive little uh, chip brush. A, a package of these came from uh, Dollar Tree, uh, and there were several in it. So there, it's not like a fancy brush because it's just glue. I'm just gonna, I'm just swiping glue around. Um, the other thing I have is uh, like a key card or an old credit card or a card to an, a membership, an, an old Costco card or Sam's Club card, something like that to help me smooth things down to get out air bubbles um, underneath. So those are the materials I'm gonna be using. Um, I tend, when I have something this large, to kind of use some larger pieces of paper. I'm gonna alternate between the book pages and the music pages, uh, just so that it kind of all gets spread out evenly. The, the papers are multiple colors. There's lots of different colors of, of beige. Um, in the 
the music pages have kind of a manila -y color, and then some of them are quite dark. Um, some of them are different shades. You can see there's a lot of different shades of kind of beige in, in those, whereas these are all pretty much the same color, but mixed in with these, it'll be a nice, a nice juxtaposition. I am going to paint over the pages, so it doesn't really matter you know, what direction they go or what color and stuff. You will see, you will see them through, but you won't really see the details on them. Um, you'll just see like there's music or words or something behind by the time I'm, I'm done painting. I will probably use an acrylic paint that's watered down so it's not so thick that it covers it completely. I don't want to cover it all completely. You could use um, a watercolor paint, but that takes a, a lot of, it takes a lot of paint for something this large. So it's probably a better idea to use something that you could just thin out like, like acrylics. Um, the size of the canvas that I am working on, when you include the frame, because I'm gonna cover the frame as well, is a little over three and a half feet high by, or sorry, it's a little under three and a half feet high by a little over four and a half feet wide. So this is a very large piece. Um, so I'm just gonna do a few a few little things as, as a demo here, uh, and then I am going to turn off the camera and do the rest, uh, mostly because it requires me to move the, turn the, the canvas and, and move it around a lot so that I can reach all different parts of it. Uh, and I have to hang it off the edge in order to do the edge pieces, that kind of stuff. So. It would be it would be hard to stay in frame um, anyway. So uh, since this has kind of a, a straight edge here along it, I'm probably going to go ahead and use the straight edges um, just because it seems like an easier way to line that up. Because I want to leave this space for when I put when I put the map pieces on. So the map pieces will be there. And then you'll see something like this one here. And then uh, a piece of the music here maybe, or, or this way. Once I get the edges done, uh, then I will go back and fill the middle with all torn pieces, but I will, I will use the straight edges to get the outer rim done first just because it's a lot easier to cover up to up to the edge that way and to keep that straight edge. And I'd like to keep it. And as I said, since I'm gonna paint over it, I'm not worried about whether there's, whether, you know, whether there's a little bit of margin kind of around the edges. So that's, that's where we're gonna start. So it would just be a matter of laying down some wallpaper paste this is fairly thin, but you know, if you if you get some and it gets a little old, then you can always you can always add a little water to it to thin it down. And I'm just going to go right up to the edge of that. And then brush some brush some over it. Paper buckles, especially when it gets wet, so if you if you get a wrinkle, it's not a big deal. That's part of the character of it. Um, frank, frequently I use my finger just to kind of burnish it down a little bit. Um, but don't, you know, don't stress if it's not perfectly flat. That's okay because that's part of what makes it, part of what makes it interesting. Right? So, I put all this paper here. And now I can't get to where I want to get to. And I don't worry too much about um, when I'm doing the edges, like I said, getting things tucked in, that kind of stuff. You can always come back and add a piece on top, going a different direction, um, whatever. So if I come back, you know, and, and I do the edge and it's not, and I look at it and I go, oh, I don't really like that, then I can put another piece on top of it and cover it up. It is not going to make that big of a difference. So. 
Okay, let's do an edge piece. Um, I did, I did one and realized it was out of frame. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Maybe we'll scoot this down a little bit so that we can work in frame here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and lay some glue here. And on the last one, I put the glue on the paper which is fine, but I'm kind of struggling to make it stick. It's really better when the glue is on the on the substrate and then absorbs into the paper. So I may have to go back and take that one off and, and do it again. But I wanna get some of the glue down in there. And then I think I'm gonna put some on the paper as well. This is pretty stiff paper, the matte paper is. Um, so it's a little thicker and I, I want it to adhere well and I want to be able to move it around a little bit down here um, so I'm just gonna kind of put it in the edge there I'm gonna use my little credit card I think to put that in Let's see if I can get it to bend a little bit I hope it's pulling up I want it to bend, not to pull up. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you just have to fiddle with it until you get it to do what you want it to do. Let's get a little more glue over here. And paper can be finicky. So, to that edge. There we go. So I may I may have to come back and add some glue a couple more times this this is a little heavier paper and it's going to a metal frame so even though I put some gesso on it you know when when you're trying to stick things to something that doesn't usually get stuff stuck to it it might fight you a little which this seems to be doing lift this up a little and tuck that paper under because that's where it's going to go. When I turn off the video and do this, the, uh, the frame will be hanging off the edge of the table so that I can get to the bottom, the bottom edge of it and attach it. And so really I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna burnish that. Um, you can see I've rubbed a little bit of the gesso off here. It's okay, that's gonna get covered with, with music paper or book pages. So that's, that's the process, it's the same process. Uh, sometimes it's just fiddly, like on, on something like this where I'm turning it. You'll just have to kind of fiddle with it. So if you're doing your own frame and you have a frame that's similar to this and you're covering it, just you know, fiddle with it until it does what you want it to do. Um, if you bought something that is a fancier frame with a cool design, then you might wanna pop your piece out and paint your frame another color uh, or repaint it or refinish it or leave it if it's, if it's really pretty the way it is um, to go with whatever, whatever idea you have. So at this point, I'm gonna turn the camera off and cover all of these things um, because I just I need to be able to move this around and it's going to be out of frame uh, so you're not going to be able to see it so I will pop that off and then I will come back at the end and show you kind of an overview of how it looks with all of this glued down before we go today. Hi I'm back it took me just under three hours to decoupage all of the book pages and music onto the canvas and to cover the entire frame with map pages it's still wet, as you can see, 
it's it's kind of shiny where it's still wet um, and when you feel of it it's, it's still a little tacky so my plan is to let this dry overnight before I do anything else to it I don't want to risk putting something wet on it like paint and pulling things up so in the morning, the first thing I will do is check to see if I have anything that didn't stay glued, they stay glued, that didn't stay glued down. <laughs> oh. um, and I will get that fixed. I am concerned about a few other things along some of the edges on the, the frame. So I'm thinking I may have to re-glue a few of those places. But generally, I am happy with this, and I think it looks pretty good, and I'm, I'm ready to get started on uh, the, the main ideas here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, until I see you again, remember, use what you have to make your life more beautiful. Have a great day. Bye.